everybody for joining. Um, if you feel comfortable turning your cameras on, you're welcome to. I know that you are probably fatigued of uh, Zoom calls and uh, having your cameras on, but it um, since we're a small group today, it might be helpful to feel like we're all kind of in the room together. Uh, so I'm not sure how much or how little you know about me or what this workshop is gonna be, but my name is Marbella and I'm an art therapist. Uh, based here in uh, in Jojage, Montreal, and I work in private practice um, with adult clients doing art therapy and counseling. And I'm a Concordia alum, so I, I finished the Master of Arts program in Creative Arts Therapies. And uh, I'm, I mean, you know, my bio is in the Facebook. <laughs> I don't know if it's it's all that important, but uh, I guess I was asked to come here today to facilitate an art therapy workshop for you and for the students at Concordia during Anti-Consumerism Week. Uh, and so uh, we're gonna, I guess, dive in and do some art therapy and um, experiment a little bit. And really was hoping that this was going to be a little bit interactive. So I hope that you're kind of willing to share a little bit about how you are, um, where you're at and what your expectations are from being here. But I guess some, oh, <laughs> We lost one. I guess some uh, background about what art therapy is, because uh, I know that it's not the most well-known uh, method for, I guess, therapy or um, uh, self-development and improvement. It's basically using the arts to help as uh, a process to support your self-exploration and self-understanding, learning more about um, what's going on internally and playing with different art materials to uh, use symbolism and color and uh, art making to kind of make sense of what's going on internally. Uh, so today, I guess that really depends on um, what materials you have on you, <laughs> what, what you have accessible nearby. It can really be anything. Um, and uh, I figured that we would kind of take this time together to um, really kind of uh, play, experiment, and uh, and kind of learn a little bit about ourselves and meet ourselves where we are and process together. So um, the first part, I think what I was hoping we would do is to kind of check in with each other and see kind of like what you're hoping to get from this time together. We have a couple hours, might be a little bit shorter than that since we're um, a small group. But um, if we could maybe share names, pronouns, where you're joining us from, and then what you're hoping to get out of this time that we have together. Um, I, I mean, I'll, I can start us off. <laughs> my name is Marbella, my pronouns are she, her. And I'm hoping that I can help facilitate some creative exploration with people and share some of um, what I have to share and knowledge that um, I have so that people can learn maybe a couple new techniques that might help them, um, I guess, feel better <laughs> with how things are going in the world right now and to get to know themselves a little bit better. So that's um, where I am right now and why I'm here. I'm wondering if anybody else is willing to share. Hi, Shirley. Hi, um, I'm, I'm a senior and I have a lot of anxiety. I always have a lot of anxiety, but in the last year, it's kind of uh, skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I, I used to do a fair amount of art and I, I think that there might be something there that would help me. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in what you have to say. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining us, Shirley. Um, I can go next. I think Vanessa's trying to join from another device, um, mm -hmm. but I'll quickly introduce myself. Well, again, I guess um, I'm mm -hmm. Natalie. My pronouns are she slash her, and this is my actually my first time attending an art therapy, so I'm just like really curious um, to like learn a little bit more about it, mm -hmm. and um, I also thought it was a great time of the year to, to do it because we are, mm -hmm. I was telling Marbella before, that we are in middle of midterms and it is a very stressful time of the year mm -hmm. and it is nice to like relax for a little bit. Um, 
and yes, yeah, so I'm really excited to to learn a little bit more. Awesome. Thank you, Natalie. And we'll see if Vanessa can join us. It looks like, I don't know about your computers, but I see two Vanessas right now. <laughs> yeah, me too. Oh, no, now there's one. Okay. Okay, so I think she's still trying to join us with the audio, but, um, oh, Vanessa's oh, here. <laughs> Hi. Hi, hello. Hi. Uh, my name is Vanessa Mentor. My pronouns are she, her. And uh, the reason I've joined, I am just curious about our therapy and also because um, um, I left my country, Haiti, mm -hmm. to be here with my husband and it's been a year. So it's uh, a big transition for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so sometimes I really feel like uh, I am just trying to understand and adapt yeah. to a new country, new culture. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it can be heavy and I feel mm -hmm. isolated. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, so I'm maybe looking to see if there are any tools that I can use, mm -hmm. you know, to help me in um, besides or sides of all the things mm -hmm. I'm trying to do to cope with mm -hmm. uh, that new transition. Yeah. Thank you so much, Vanessa, for sharing. And I hope that I hope that there's some things here that are useful to you. And um, I'm glad that we're able to connect in this virtual space. Um, as I know that it's a very isolating time <laughs> uh, and uh, having to deal with all of the, uh, on top of the isolation, more complicated feelings of belonging can be really challenging. So I'm glad that you're able to join us today. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, we're gonna do a couple warm-ups uh, to kind of get us first into the creative mindset because I think sometimes we get super stuck in, uh, depending on our line of work or what our everyday um, um, rituals or routines are like, we, we might not get the opportunity to think creatively <laughs> or to enact our imaginations. So, the first uh, of the warm-ups is I, I want us to, well, I'll invite everybody to take a look around the space that you're in um, and think of it, like take a look, take stock of all of the objects around you and select an object that you relate to right now <laughs> for any reason. Something that you feel is kind of representative of, could be you know who you are right now for any reason what that, whatever that means, you know, think, relieve yourself of some of the pressure. It doesn't have to be super deep <laughs> or <laughs> very profound, but something that you can relate to for any reason whatsoever. Um, something that symbolizes maybe a part of you. Um, does everybody have their object or has everybody made a selection? <laughs> you can, Yes. Okay. Awesome. So um, I want you to regard this part, regard, take a look at this <laughs> until I live with a Franco, regard this item. Um, and I wonder if any, if somebody would like to start and share um, what you chose and what it is, what it is about that item that you feel is representative of who you are in the moment right now or what it, what the characteristics are. Okay, I can, oh, Shirley, go ahead. I saw you perk up. Okay, um, this is, a, this is a, a little oil painting. Mm. Um, it's an oil painting done by an artist of the house my parents lived in. Mm. And I recently offered it to one of my nephews mm. and he was so happy about it that it made me feel like such a small thing to make somebody happy. Mm. It, it was very, very gratifying. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Can we take another look at it? Beautiful. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll go. So mine is a stack of post-it. Nice. <laughs> and uh, just because I love to take mental notes 
Mm -hmm. I'm very introspective. Mm -hmm. So I'm always uh, thinking about something or looking at stuff and asking myself questions mm -hmm. about them and my own process and post it a, a great um, mm -hmm. uh, tool to help me actually when not keeping everything in my head where I can mm -hmm. quickly you know, write something down and then uh, come back to them. So um, I think mm -hmm. this object really uh, represent and express where I'm at mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. specifically, but um, on a larger scale, who I am or yeah. some part of myself. Beautiful, thank you. Um, and I chose like this bracelet. Um, it has the tree of life. Um, mm. I bought it before going to university. So I went mm. with my mom to get it. And um, it is a symbol that we used at my prom. Um, mm. And it is that like your life resembles that of a tree in the sense that you have like the roots, which is where you come from. Mm -hmm. And then you have the, mm. like the tree trunk, which is just like you mm. growing and like going through experiences. And then like the branches represent like the different paths that you take in life. So for instance, mm -hmm. school would be like a, a branch and then like university would be another one. So mm -hmm. it's my favorite bracelet. I use it every day because it reminds me of my mom. It reminds me of my childhood as well. So I really, really like it. That's beautiful. Thank you. Um, I chose my AirPods case, <laughs> which is where they charge um, because, uh, you know, you can see I have mine in right now and a lot of my job my, well, my job is listening and holding space for other people. Uh, but like me, these things run out of battery <laughs> and need time to recharge and reset and to rest. And I think that um, with how difficult things are and how much more demand there is for me to do stuff, it's more and more challenging to, to say no or to, to um, create space for myself to rest. Um, but I know that I need to rest in order to be able to do what I need to do well and to be present. So um, like, that's the symbolism that came up for me is the, the AirPod charger. So I wonder, I think it's uh, so lovely um, what everybody shared and um, what, what is it like to kind of uh, take a look at an everyday object and then to ascribe this kind of meaning and like feel that kind of connection to it. I think, um, you know, 30 minutes ago, I wouldn't have thought about this as being a symbol for myself. <laughs> but that's the, the magic of uh, the engaging the imagination and looking at things from a creative perspective is that you can assign meaning and more symbolism and metaphors and um, stuff to these things that are kind of lying around us that we might not really think about on a deeper level. Um, so that's maybe a kind of check-in tool that you can use every once in a while um, is by being grounded in where you are in the present, like take a look, take stock of, of what is in your surroundings. And how do I relate to, like, what is it around me that I relate to right now? So what do you think? What was that like, that little mini warm up for, for all of you? Thank you for participating and humoring me in that way, by the way. <laughs> that was really lovely to see. And I feel like I learned a little bit more about all of you through that process. So. I think for me, it's uh, having a, bringing a new eye, you know, on an environment I think I know. Mm -hmm. And um, and also it's, um, expanding my perspective on things mm -hmm. and for me specifically I think it's so important right now because at the same time everything feels kind of new but new in a sense where I really don't know who I am um, in you know a relationship mm -hmm. to a new land uh, new mm -hmm. people um, new homes you know mm -hmm. houses and way that we function so mm -hmm. being able to be in my apartment where it feels safe because I think I've been living here for uh, almost a year now. Um, but also keeping that fresh 
perspective Mm -hmm. where Mm -hmm. I don't feel like um, it's always the same thing because Mm -hmm. there's this contrast also being, oh, I'm in this new world, Mm -hmm. but at the same time, I feel like every day looks the same Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. right now I'm not working yet and my husband is always traveling for work. So most of the time I'm alone. So there is this challenge to um kind of um not feeling that you know life is so heavy right and it, and it's worthless mm-hmm. because there's this routine establishing mm-hmm. nothing so I think this is what uh, I'm getting from this mm-hmm. there's always room to look at mm-hmm. things differently mm-hmm. and uh mm-hmm. or re-engage with yeah. that um beautiful you, yeah Mm-hmm. Thank you, Vanessa. Okay, are you ready for the next kind of mini activity together? Do, um, I'm wondering what materials you all have nearby. Um, I, I, if you, does everybody have like a drawing materials? So like um, even like a piece of paper, a pen, or okay, <laughs> okay. Do you have a? Does any, everybody have a blank piece of paper? Yeah and a pencil or a pen or a marker or whatever. So um, I am gonna, there's a couple different ways. So sorry, let me get my bearings back. The <laughs> art therapy is much less about creating like a final product. It's not like an art class so that you make like a beautiful finished piece at the end. Sometimes that does happen, but it really is more about like engaging the, oh, did I freeze? Oh, here we go. So it's about engaging the creative process and letting that be like what informs, um, you know, your, your practice. So I wanna uh, just alleviate the pressure to make any good, good art <laughs> or <laughs> to perform or um, to make something that is gonna be displayed. So I really want to encourage people to kind of like play at this moment um, and have a little bit of fun. So the first thing that we're going to do is something called a scribble drawing. So oh, we have someone who's joined us. Okay, so we have our, um, our paper and our pen or drawing implement. And before we start, I want people to kind of feel, take a minute to feel a little bit more grounded in their bodies. So feel your feet, your, <laughs> your how, what it's like to kind of sit, relax your shoulders a little bit, maybe like shake it out a bit. Um, and you can use your dominant hand or your non-dominant hand in this process. Uh, it's really up to you, but I just want you to scribble. So <laughs> just take your pen, your marker and just scribble all over the page in whatever way makes sense. Don't think too much about it. Um, It doesn't have to look like anything and we'll scribble together for just a couple more seconds and then we'll stop there. Okay, so now we have our beautiful (laughs) works of art. (laughs) And I want to invite everybody to engage with your scribble by trying to find an image in it. So it's like your own personal word find, but it's an image find. So maybe you have to turn the page a couple times, um, make it vertical, turn it upside down, but try and see if there's an image hiding in there something that might like pop up to you. Mine is very chaotic, so it'll be (laughs) a little bit of a challenge, but take a minute to see. Once it pops out to you, I want to ask you to use your drawing materials to bring it out more, like outline it more, color it in, embellish some parts of it, make it more, you know, finished and color the parts that that like makes sense. Um, So in the art therapy process, there is a bit of silence, which can be uncomfortable with for people. 
but it also like allows us the opportunity to just feel held with each other as we're kind of engaging in the art making process. So we'll spend a couple minutes um, embellishing each of our drawings. And if you have any questions or if anything comes up for you. Of course, feel free to speak to me. So we'll just spend another couple of minutes here. Okay. So, is anybody willing to share what they found? I can start <laughs> if, uh, if that's helpful. So you saw my chaotic scribble <laughs> uh, earlier. So I managed to find this very strange bird. <laughs> Uh, not standing not very well on this branch. <laughs> I don't know what the symbolism is there, but this is uh, this is what came out for me. Would anybody else like to share? Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if you can see this, but I had a bunch of scribbles and I too found a bird in the middle. Oh, wow. <laughs> found a, a bird landing in the water. Wow. 
beautiful. I think we're thinking about spring, maybe, Shirley. <laughs> uh, I can share mine. Um, <laughs> mine's like a, well, it, it's not like the, the best shape, but it's one of those like pepper um, shakers, oh, cool. I guess they're called. <laughs> Yeah, like a grinder? Uh, yeah, a grinder. There you go. That's <laughs> what so I was able to find my scribble. Uh, mine, I feel like, is a human face, but oh. really the, the bottom and the upper side, I'm thinking, is just the brain. Oh, and wow. it's everything. And here I have those lines um which after all I feel like represent some type some type of scars that mm -hmm. you would have and um yeah I think it was so funny that and weird mm -hmm. this is the um the form and image that I got mm -hmm. from this. Mm -hmm. so this process I find is really nice when you know you want to engage creatively but you don't know where to start <laughs> because that can sometimes be the most intimidating part right is what where do I even start but when you just scribble there's like the inf it will reveal itself to you and so I think uh, it's it's interesting where, um, to see what comes up um, because sometimes that can be information and sometimes it is something that just absolutely means nothing but it's a really nice way to just kind of get yourself creating and um, in that kind of creative mindset. But yeah, so you can do this um, in a much slower kind of way. Hi, Emma, thank you for joining us. <laughs> um, so you can take a lot more time to do like a much more finished drawing or painting or whatever, if you'd like to, um, you know, in your own process, but that's like another, um, prompt or activity that you can use is just scribble and then kind of see um, you, you, you've seen I'm sure those like ink blots the rose arch tests from like old movies about therapy and stuff um, this always kind of reminds me of that because it's like hmm, what do I see when I look into <laughs> into this uh, this scribble that kind of means nothing okay so the next um, the next kind of warm up I want us to do before we kind of get into our own art making process um, involves a little bit. It's a, it's a pretty similar exercise, but it it can it involves a little bit of self trust, and in that we're gonna do a bit of drawing with our eyes closed. So um, I'm gonna invite everybody again to take your drawing materials. Um, in front of you. You can start with your pen or your um, pencil or marker or whatever it is you're using to draw with. You can start with it on the page so that you know where the page is. You don't end up accidentally drawing on your <laughs> furniture or <laughs> whatever it um, is around you. So whenever you're ready, I'm going to invite everybody to close your eyes and to draw yourself what you think that you look like um, right now. Pressure is off, doesn't have to be good. It's all gonna look absurd, <laughs> but we'll all just close our eyes and um, start kind of drawing what we think our faces look like. You can draw your body and your hair if you feel like um, <laughs> adding that in. Try as hard. I know that it's very tempting to cheat <laughs> and to peek, but trust yourself and, um, you know, kind of take the risk <laughs> of playing in this moment. And whenever you feel like you've <laughs> finished <laughs> your self portrait, you can open your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. 
and see your beautiful masterpiece self-portrait. And uh, similar to <laughs> similar to what we did in like the last exercise with the scribble drawing, uh, I'm gonna invite you now to like take your other materials or colors or whatever, and then like embellish or add to um, the drawing that you have. So you can add clothes, you can add color, patterns, texture, your hair. Don't try to try to steer away from like fixing it or making it look more photorealistic, but try to kind of add to. And uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm just laughing at what I <laughs> my own face and what I've done. So we'll take a, another few minutes here. So putting the finishing touches. Okay, I'm curious to hear, I mean, I think I saw some smiles and like laughter, even with the muted microphones, <laughs> as we opened our eyes and took a look at our drawings. Uh, I'm curious if anybody wants to share, talk about what that process was like for you, um, if you enjoyed it, if you hated it, um, kind of like what came up uh, while you were making. Anybody feel like sharing? 
Do you want to see mine first to take the edge off of how? Here's my glorious. <laughs> self-portrait with the giant pink lips and there's my my, my plaques <laughs> yeah and uh, I mean I always find this exercise fun uh interesting in a similar way to the one that we just did because it there's no way it can be good and so then that takes away the pressure of like perfectionism or performing or create like creating a finished or fine piece of art um, and then it also helps me kind of check in with myself with the embellishing part of like what I think is important or like what I feel the urge to fix right away or what I feel like I need to add. Um, yeah, but and I, it's always fun too, which I think um, we need to kind of sometimes take as much of as we can <laughs> right now um, is to engage that kind of play side of us or that those moments where we find things funny and um, yeah, so I wonder if anybody else is willing to kind of share what that was like for them, if you enjoyed it, um, if you didn't, what your drawings turned out like. I, I fixed my hands and my teeth. <laughs> Oh, your hair! <laughs> wow, <laughs> a little flip. <laughs> Wonderful. What was it like for you, Shirley, to draw with your eyes closed? I had to decide whether I was going to try to make make me the way I think I look versus the way I, I wish I looked. Mm. Felt that I had a choice, you know, since mm. it was sort of dreamlike. I could mm -hmm. make it the way I wanted to. And so I had to choose to make it look like me, mm -hmm. you know, with, with fault. Mm -hmm. And I found that quite refreshing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. I can show mine. Um, it was, it looks a little bit off because uh, I wasn't able to. Like determine where I was putting my pencil so mm -hmm. um it looks like this um nice. this is a shirt that I <laughs> modified afterwards I nice. added a necklace but yeah my face is over here and the rest of my face is here and here's my neck. I love it <laughs> so. there's something so surreal about it it's like it does feel like a fan like a dreamlike <laughs> <laughs> image <laughs> What, what, what was that process like for you, Natalie? Did you enjoy it? Was it fun? Or? Uh, it was fun. Uh, it was yeah. different, but it just it was hard um, mm -hmm. for me to know. I kept on trying to like use my fingers, maybe like to determine mm. like where was the last like place mm. I drew on, but it didn't mm. really work. Yeah, I, I I find this is yeah like you just reminded me like this exercise is really good about um, kind of forcing us to let go of control <laughs> or like to let go of wanting to be perfect and control every element. And that like surrender piece um, helps us kind of tune into how much, how uncomfortable we are with that or how comfortable we are with that. And it's a good kind of like temperature, it's like a thermometer for our, <laughs> for where we are to see like, okay, is this making me feel good or is this making me feel really bad <laughs> or where, where am I at in this moment? But and also like, it's interesting how much it engages different like creative problem solving that you don't think that you're gonna use, like using your other hand to, <laughs> to tell where things are and to engage in a different kind of sensory experience. So thanks for sharing that. Does anybody else wanna share? I can go. Hi. Hi. Um... I don't know if I can see. Cool. Everything that is blue is what I made afterwards, and everything that is red is what I did when the eyes were closed. Wow. Um, I guess the biggest problem is I wasn't sure that I was actually having paint <laughs> because I had my paintbrush, so that really stressed me out mm. uh, because I wasn't sure it was working. Mm -hmm. But uh, so then I actually at some point I like had to 
open my eyes on the side to try to, to just put some more paint to actually you know so that's uh but i actually think that there was paint the whole time <laughs> so i think maybe if i did it again i would um make sure that i mm -hmm. either have paint beforehand so i don't mm -hmm. have to think about it or if i would use something else mm -hmm. than paint awesome and what was it like? What, I mean, like I'm hearing that there was a little bit of stress maybe <laughs> in the process. About <laughs> but not about having the eyes closed or not about, I, I agree that uh, uh, there's something very liberating as n for sure you're not going to be able to do anything accurate. So I think that's uh, nice. Yeah. But uh, no, I guess it was just like a technically, like just the idea that maybe there was going to be nothing at the end, but mm -hmm. then it happened. It was fine. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Vanessa, do you feel like sharing or would you like to pass this one? Well, I can share. Uh, yeah. Mining that. Amazing. And, uh, what's funny about this, it's like my head is disconnected yeah. from my body. Yeah. And, uh, but I was kind of nervous just you know being in the dark and it reminds me also of uh i try to do that sometimes when i go on my daily walks mm -hmm. and just to close my eyes because i'm trying to build more trust mm. with myself and it mm. reminded me of you know when i do that also on my daily walks and mm. the i really relate to what you were saying the having, um, being scared of letting go and mm -hmm. having control mm -hmm. on things. And um, yeah, I was kind of in some type of edge, I feel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was re revealing. That's really interesting. And like, I, I feel like there's a connection here with the head brain in the other one and the, yeah. yeah. And the disconnection, I feel like there's, symbolism in yes, that as well. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's amazing. I uh awesome. Beautiful. You all did awesome. And I'm really excited that about how willing you all were to <laughs> engage and like to share the stuff that you made. So we're at about the halfway point now. So I wonder if people need to take a break to um, get water or stretch or um, kind of do what they need to do. Because um, once we come back, we're going to go into more like self-directed art making. Um, so maybe we'll take like, how much time do people need? Like five minutes, 10 minutes or seven minutes, five minutes. Okay. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so if we can take five minutes, you can, Turn your camera and sound off, relax, and we'll meet uh, back again at five minutes to one. Okay, thank you, everybody. Uh, Franz, and I'm, I, and I heard about um, the, this by my sister two minutes ago, like two minutes before I joined, but I'm not oh, a wow. Concordia student. I, <gasps> I studied art therapy in France. Yeah. So, and then she, she's a Concordia student. So she's like, oh, this is happening, go. And so I arrived, but I had no idea what, uh, uh, what was uh, happening. Mm. But during the break, I, I check out and it was a whole week. And so now I know where I am. Wonderful. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. So we have Montreal, France, and Colombia. Okay, that's pretty amazing. So I hope you enjoyed, I hope you had a very refreshing and restorative break, five minutes just now. <laughs> and now we're, um, I'm gonna invite everybody. What, what normally happens in like an art therapy session or in an art therapy group is you'll have time to make art. <laughs> and sometimes that's more directive. So an art therapist will give you a prompt, like a theme to work on. Um, and sometimes it's not directive. So it's like, just create from your imagination, anything that you want. Um, so we're gonna have a little mini session of uh, time to just express ourselves and play with whatever art materials that we have on us. And um, I, I'm gonna give you a directive, but it's up to you if you would like to reject that directive. I might even reject the directive. <laughs> 
<laughs> so if it doesn't feel right to you and something else feels more right, like uh, you really feel more like exploring something else, you're welcome to do that. But um, I'm gonna have a very loose theme of uh, what do you need right now? Like what, like what, what would make life much better <laughs> right now? Or what do you think you need that would make you feel, feel good? So you can interpret that in, in any way that you want. You can use any materials. If you feel like being more abstract and just trying to display the feeling by using you know, more emotion with paint or pastels, you can do that. If you wanna collage some stuff, cut stuff out, you can do that as well. Um, but we're gonna take about 15 minutes to do this part. Um, it's up to you if you wanna keep your cameras on or off or you're welcome to listen to music, um, to do whatever it is that you need to do. Um, but at about 1.15, 1 1.20, we'll check in at 1.15, see if, anybody, if people need a little bit more time because normally we'd have um, a bit longer to do this part, but we'll take about 15 minutes to kind of just play around and explore that theme. Does that sound good? Okay. So I will be here if you need anything um, and have fun.
So we have about five minutes left.
How's everybody doing? Do we need a little bit more time or are we okay to wrap up in a minute or so? I'm okay. I'm okay. Done. okay. We'll wrap in like one or two minutes. Okay, how's everybody doing? So I wonder if it's possible. I realize um, everybody's kind of got a different setup at home, but can, can we kind of clear our spaces as much as possible of any like materials and then just leave the piece that you made, give it like some breathing room so that it, um, If we were all together, I would invite all of us to hang our stuff up on the wall so we can have our little vernissage together, a little <laughs> art show. Um, pretend like we are in the studio sharing with one another. But I find that this part is um, like a nice ritual to help us not only like um, spend a lot of time like focusing on the artwork, but also um, reduces the temptation to go back in and continue fixing <laughs> and continue <laughs> making changes or edits um, as we kind of do our reflection. So, which I know is super tempting and I'm very guilty of doing that um, in my own process, but. So kind of similar to when we started, if everybody wants to kind of check back in with their bodies and feel a little bit more present and you just made a lot of artwork in <laughs> a short amount of time, we uh, made a lot of different things. And so I, um, I'm gonna invite people to share their reflections about what that process was like for you. If you wanna share your art, um, what that was like, uh, I can start also, um, if that's helpful. I had been collecting a bunch of like collage images um, from the magazines that I have. And I kind of like extended the image. I feel like what I re need right now is an alternate universe, <laughs> like a different fantasy land where things are different and where uh, rules don't apply or where whatever's happening right now isn't happening and uh, I think that that escapism and like the surrealism is really helpful to me to kind of take myself into like the the different world um, and the imaginary world every once in a while it's like really alleviating <laughs> to have a, a little bit of peace every now and then and um, yeah I wonder if what that was like for you if um if it was helpful, what you ended up making. I found it really hard to stay present even for 15 minutes to uh, just continue making my own work because I'm so, um, I think, preoccupied with <laughs> so many other things that have to get done, What what's going on in my work life, how, how I have to plan ahead. So I'm like um, on another page, like doing calculations <laughs> of things I have to do and <laughs> making more and more lists. Uh, so like that was something that I, I think was a bit revealing to me too about like how hard it was to stay present and like how challenging it was to even take 15 minutes 
to focus on one thing. So I think that's a sign that maybe I need a little bit more rest <laughs> right now or a little bit, um, that's some information that I can use for myself about what I need in my process. So I wonder if, if anybody would like to share what it was like for them, what, what you came up with, if you wanna share the art that you made or yeah. I'll go. So I made a mini book. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the process for me was uh, at the beginning, I didn't know what I needed I, and, and how I wanted to express that. So, um, but the idea of making a mini book and I use you know some of the post-its post <laughs> <laughs> and um and so I inside I've just wrote I feel like what inside of me I need self-expression mm. connection um embodiment because I feel like the exercise mm -hmm. we did earlier my brain being disconnected from my body mm -hmm. I need to come back to that more love um creativity by attending this class I think this is the yearning inside of me mm -hmm. being more creative rituals laughter purpose and service and um family so it's a lot of things that I need and I feel like uh, the book the is because it's a way to gather all of these things mm. and have them in a container where I can actually come back and maybe create mm. space for them as a reminder because I love words and I love reminders mm -hmm. so I can um you know remember mm -hmm. what to uh what needs attention right mm. now in my life so that's why I created that and one thing I realized is like, I was making a lot of uh, judgments and because I was not cutting the materials, they were not straight. You know, I was make. I felt like, oh, I was not good at making this, this little thing. And so it's, a, I think, a, a really good reminder for me to give myself more grace and I, I can mm. see where in my life I'm judging myself too hard or I want to make it perfect or I want to mm. appear perfect or why don't I do this you know um, more perfectly so there's this urge to get it uh, and to do it right the first mm. time you try it instead mm. of you know remembering practice everything you know makes Practice makes perfect. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> mm -hmm. so thank you for this. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was a great activity and exercise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. And what a lovely little reminder that you can like place next to you or bring around with you of, yeah. you know, some big things in a tiny little book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you. Vanessa. Thank you. Who would like to go next? Sure. I, I thought that what I really wanted and needed was light and brightness. Mm. So I set down a picture of a window. Mm. Picture of a window. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I, well, you know, on the wall there are pictures on the side, but they're incidental, they're not important. And on the floor there are all these shoes because I never go anywhere. Mm -hmm. But when I got to here, I couldn't decide what it was I wanted in this space. Mm -hmm. so I've, kind of, I've kind of given up on thinking that there really is something bright out there. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have to figure out what I need to do in my space. Yeah, yeah. But you still made the window. 
He still made yeah. the window. Yeah. He the window still, yeah. Yeah. And so I think that that is like, maybe that can inform your exploration is, mm-hmm. is what can fill that space or what is what is beyond. Um, maybe I could put some things in the window that I do know are possible. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. What was it like for you? What is that is, you know, I'm kind of sensing some emotions coming up as you're talking about it. Well, I started off with great enthusiasm and then I gradually lost it and got very discouraged. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Multitudes. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And so I, 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 I hope that you're able to hold yourself in all of those feelings of, um, you know, being capable of feeling that discouragement, but then also that brightness as also Mm -hmm. being a part of you and tapping into that enthusiasm when it comes, um, when it comes back again. And I mean, it's clear that the art is a really um, helpful part of, you know, who you are. And I hope that you continue to use it as like a tool to process um, you know, what, what you need and want and how, how to kind of assist yourself in this time, like while things are really difficult. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Shirley. Uh, I can show mine. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't really know where to start and I feel like I had more ideas, like the more I started like Uh, drawing and coloring Um, and it's incomplete because I didn't know how to like add everything Um, but I'll try to explain to you guys what I wanted to do so it's like Mm -hmm. a park but here's like the bench the grass like a little Mm -hmm. lake and like there's a street like towards the end so what I wanted to do was also like to include people um, and maybe just like relating to the fact that like I would want everything to go back to normal like pre-pandemic mm-hmm. the time where we could mm-hmm. go out without having to worry um, where like things were maybe a little bit more simple and we could share mm-hmm. with people and it's also a, like the, the scene that I painted is very like peaceful and very like calm because it's like mm-hmm. outside like in nature and I feel like so like everyone or at least like myself we get like really caught up in like the the other things in life like our responsibilities don't really like Mm -hmm. have enough time to like sit back and like relax and do something else so Mm -hmm. that's that's what I wanted to draw that's beautiful thank you Emma, do you feel like sharing or would you like to pass? Uh, no. Okay. I, yes, I guess I kind of uh, made a list at first because I I haven't really settled. I was uh, I was picking up soil outside until, I don't know, a minute and a half before joining <laughs> the room. So I hadn't really settled. So I couldn't really... Uh, so what my first thing was a uh, good compost would really make mm. my life better because I don't have a good compost. So that was the first <laughs> thing that came to my mind. So mm. very practical. Mm. Then uh, it was a wise rabbit because um, my rabbit is being crazy next to me. So I thought uh, a bit mm. of wildness would make it better. And so mm. I think then I settled to think about something a bit bigger than just what happened in my living room. So yeah. I thought, written t- thesis then mm-hmm. it would be uh, better but it's gonna happen but I just need to get to mm-hmm. it and uh, prepared dinner mm-hmm. dinner time at the moment and I'm gonna have to make it and if it was already made mm-hmm. then I would um, I would love it <laughs> That's lovely. It looks like a zine to me. I feel like this is like a zine of what Emma needs in this moment. <laughs> yeah, what a cool approach. I am. Um, so it's it's time for us to wrap up actually and to say goodbye. And I I want to say thank you to everybody for you know some really awesome stuff was shared. And I hope that that was helpful to you to you know be in the space together and to use. Um, art to kind of explore stuff and I hope that there were some techniques that you 
learned that you can kind of integrate into your own process um, to support yourself throughout um, the garbage fire <laughs> that's happening <laughs> right now. And um, yeah, I wonder if, if anybody has any last questions or comments or things they'd like to share. Um, I want to say I'm super grateful to all of you for your willingness to participate. And I feel like that's um, like the juicy stuff. That's what makes it so special is how much people are willing to to share and bring themselves into it. And I just, um, yeah, I think it's fantastic. And I'm, I feel really lucky that I got to meet all of you and spend this time with you this afternoon. So thank you. I really appreciate the time you spent with us. And thank you very much. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you for teaching us and for opening up the space. I really enjoyed it. As I said, it's, it was my first art therapy. Um, so I didn't like really know like what to expect, but it was really, really fun. Yeah, thank you so much, Natalie. Yeah, thank you for holding the space for mm -hmm. us in that capacity. Anyways, I've mm -hmm. learned a lot and uh, gained a lot. Mm -hmm. And so one question I would have is like, if people want to uh, continue this, yeah. and where can they find you online? Yeah, find me. You can find me on the internet. My website is just my name. I'll type okay. it onto the chat right here. So it's marbellacarlos.com. Okay. Um, and there are, you know, in Montreal, there's lots of options for art therapy as well. I know the Art Highs Network is doing a lot of online art, art therapy or like at least group art hive um, initiatives. Um, I, you know, I'm planning hopefully in the future to be able to do more groups. It's tough right now because of COVID. So... I am only doing individual work right now, but you can find me online there. And if you want to send me an email, you're welcome to all my information there. And uh, my voice cracked. And um, yeah, I hope I wish all of you the best of luck. Mm -hmm. um, and thank you. I hope that you keep uh, creating and uh, tapping into that because I feel like there was like some juicy stuff that came up and that that is really magical. So. Thank you all for coming and for joining us and to the CSU for having me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh, wait.